entitled Don't Look Now. Tonight, we take pleasure in bringing you Suspense, a weekly anthology of notable melodramas from stage and screen, fiction and radio, presented each week to bring you to the edge of your chair, to keep you in Suspense. What? There's one sitting right beside you. Oh, he just went out. You mean you couldn't see him? A lot of people have been going in and out. So which who went out? What have I been telling you for the last ten minutes? Weren't you listening? I was listening. You were talking about bathtubs, radios, Orson Welles. Not Orson, not Orson. H.G. Wells. With Orson, it was a gang. But H.G. knew, or he suspected anyway. I wonder if it was simply intuition with him. He couldn't have had any proof. But he did stop writing science fiction rather suddenly, didn't he? Hmm? Oh, I'll bet he knew once, though. Knew what? About the Martians. Oh, Going on about your little green men again, Mr. Lyman? And I keep telling you they're not green. Lady, is he bothering you? No, though I don't know what the heck he's talking about. Then listen, will you? Oh, this won't do us a bit of good if you don't listen. It may not anyway. The trick is to get evidence, convincing evidence. Then we'll have something. <laughs> what do you mean, we? Oh, you're a reporter, aren't you? I'm a stringer for the post. Then you ought to be writing all this down. It'll be the biggest story you or anyone else ever gets. I want everybody to know the whole world. It's important. <gasps> Terribly important. It explains everything. Oh, and my life won't be safe unless I can pass along the information and make people believe it. Why won't you be safe? Because of the Martians. They own the world. Then they own my newspaper, too, so I can't print anything they don't like. Hmm. I never thought of that. They're not omnipotent, though. I'm sure they're vulnerable. Or why have they always kept undercover, hmm? They're afraid of being found out. Oh, if the world had convincing evidence... Look, people always believe what they read in the newspapers. Mr. Lyman... I could have sworn we had this very conversation last week. Do you remember? Of course I can remember. I've got practically total recall. Oh, it's something new, very new. I never could do it before. I can even remember my last conversation with the Martians. Hmm? When was that? Oh, this morning. Wow. You can remember a conversation from this morning. <laughs> you don't understand. They make us forget, you see. Hmm? They tell us what to do, and we forget about the conversation. Post-hypnotic suggestion, I expect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we follow their orders just the same. There's the compulsion, though we think we're making our own decisions. Oh, they own the world, all right. But nobody knows it except me. How did you find out? Oh, boy. You sure you want to ask? Well, I've gone with it this far. I got my brain scrambled in a way. I'd been fooling around with supersonic detergents, trying to work out something marketable, you know. Supersonic detergents? Don't. The gadget went wrong. High frequency waves, they went right through me. Should have been inaudible, but I could hear them, or rather, I could see them. And after that, I could see and hear the Martians. Their methods work efficiently on ordinary brains, but mine isn't ordinary anymore. See, they can't hypnotize me either. They can command me, but I needn't obey, not since the accident. 
No. I hope they don't suspect. Maybe they do. Oh, yes. I guess they do. How can you tell? Oh, the way they look at me. Oh, yes. The look. How do they look at you? And what are they like? I'm not sure. Oh, oh, I can see them all right, but only when they're dressed up. Hmm. Dressed up? What does that even mean? They dress up in, in human skins. What? Oh, here we go. No, not real ones. Imitations, like the cats and jammer kids zipped into crocodile suits. Undressed? I don't know. I've never seen one. Maybe they're invisible, even to me then. Or, or maybe they're just camouflaged. Disguised as ants, or owls, or rats, or iguanas, or... Or anything. Okay, I get it. Or anything. And when they're dressed up like humans, like that one who was sitting next to you earlier when I told you not to look. They're visible then, right? Sometimes. To everybody. But once in a while, for some reason, they... Wait a second. Let me make sure I'm getting this straight. They dress up in human skins, but sometimes they're still invisible. Only now and then. The human skins are perfectly good imitations. Nobody can tell the difference. It's that third eye that gives them away. When they keep it closed, you'd never guess it was there. And when they want to open it, they go invisible. Like that. Past. When I see someone with a third eye right in the middle of his forehead, <laughs> oh, I know he's a Martian and invisible, and I pretend not to notice him. So wait, you can only really see the Martians when they're invisible? Yes. Of course. You got all that, Frank? Oh, sure. <laughs> Clear as can be. But how do you know we're not both visible Martians? Hmm. Drunk as I am, I don't think so. Well, I see you both in here every night, so I'm pretty sure. Anyway, it's a risk I have to take. The Martians will go to any length to make a man give himself away. I realize that. I can't really trust anybody. But I had to find someone to talk to, and I... I suppose I could be wrong. When the third eye's closed... I can't tell if it's there. Hmm. Would you mind opening your third eye? Excuse me? Um, maybe another time. So you want me to take this to my editor and convince him to splash it across the front page? I want to give my secret to the world. The question is, how far will I get? You'd expect they'd have killed me the minute I opened my mouth to you, except that I didn't say anything while they were here. <laughs> I don't believe they take us very seriously, you know. Really? I can't imagine why. This must have been going on since the dawn of history, and by now they've had time to get careless. They let Charles Fort go pretty far before they cracked down on him. But you notice they were careful. Never to let Fort get hold of genuine proof that would convince people. So what do Martians do, besides hang around in bars all dressed up like us? Hmm. I'm still working on that. It isn't easy to understand. Well, they run the world, of course, but why? Why? <sighs> if they do run it, they've got a lot of explaining to do. That's what I mean. From our viewpoint... There's no sense to it. We do things illogically, but only because they tell us to. Everything we do almost is pure illogic. Pose imp of the perverse. It's all very well for psychologists to explain why a murderer wants to confess, but it's still an illogical reaction. Unless a Martian commands him to. No, mm-mm. You can't be hypnotized into doing anything that violates your moral sense. No, not by another human. Oh, but you can by a Martian. I expect they got the upper hand when we didn't have more than eight brains, and they've kept it ever since. They evolved as we did and kept a step ahead. They conquered the world, but nobody ever knew it. And they've been ruling ever since. But... Take houses, for example. 
uncomfortable things. <laughs> Ugly, inconvenient, dirty, everything wrong with them. But when men like Frank Lloyd Wright slip out from under the Martian's thumb long enough to suggest something better, look how the people react. They hate the thought. That's their Martians giving them orders. Oh, look. Why should the Martians care what kind of houses we live in? Tell me that. I don't like the note of skepticism I detect creeping into this conversation. <laughs> oh, they care, all right. No doubt about it. They live in our houses. Oh, we don't build for our convenience. We, we, we build under orders for the Martians, the way they want it. Oh, they're very much concerned with everything we do. And the more senseless, the more concern. Well, uh, take wars. Wars don't make sense from any human viewpoint, huh? Nobody really wants wars. But we go right on having them. From the Martian viewpoint, they're useful. Uh, they give us a spurt in technology, and they reduce the excess population. And there are lots of other results, too. Colonization, for one thing. But we need technology. In peacetime, if a guy invents jet propulsion, it's too expensive to develop commercially. In wartime, though, it's got to be developed. Then the Martians can use it whenever they want. They use us the way they'd use tools or, or limbs. And nobody ever really wins a war, except the Martians. Well, it must be nice to be a Martian. Oh, it must be indeed. Up until now, no race ever successfully conquered and ruled another. The underdog could revolt or absorb. If you know you're being ruled, then the rule is vulnerable. But if the world doesn't know, and it doesn't, well, well, take radios. There's no earthly reason why a sane human should listen to a radio. But the Martians make us do it. They like it. Oh, take bathtubs. Not the bathtubs again. Nobody contends that bathtubs are comfortable for us, but they're fine for Martians. All the impractical things we keep on using, uh, even though we know they're impractical. Like, like typewriter ribbons. Yes. I don't know why they act as they do. It looks illogical sometimes, but I feel perfectly sure they've got sound motives for every move they make. Until I get that worked out, I'm pretty much at a standstill. Until I get evidence, proof, and help. I've got to stay undercover till then. And I've been doing that. Oh, oh I do what they tell me. So they don't suspect. And I pretend to forget what they tell me to forget. Then you've got nothing to worry about, right? <laughs> when I hear the water running in the tub and a Martian splashing around, I pretend I don't hear a thing. My bed's too short, and I tried last week to order a special link. But the Martian that sleeps there told me not to. He's a runt like most of them. Oh, that is, I, I think they're runts. I have to deduce because you, you never see them undressed. But it goes on like that constantly. So, we've all got a Martian in bed with us? Oh, yes. By the way, how's your Martian? My Martian? Now, listen. I may be just a little bit drunk, but my logic remains unimpaired. I can still put two and two together. Either you know about the Martians, or you don't. If you do, there's no point in giving me that, what, my Martian routine. I know you have a Martian. Your Martian knows you have a Martian. My Martian knows you have a Martian. The point is, do you know? Think hard. No, I haven't got a Martian. <laughs> oh, nervous, I see. Of course you have a Martian. I suspect you know it. What would I be doing with a Martian? What would you be doing without one? I imagine it's illegal. If they caught you running around without one, they'd probably put you in a pound or something until you're claimed by another Martian. Oh, you've got one all right. Oh, so have I. So is he and he and he and, and the bartender. Mm. Of course they have. But they'll all go back to Mars tomorrow on their pink elephants, and then you can see a good doctor. 
Until then, you'd better have another drink. <gasps> Don't look now. It's all right. There aren't any marks. <laughs> One just came in. Oh, well, so naturally there was nothing for me to do but climb out on the roof after it. <laughs> Took me ten minutes to get it down the ladder. <laughs> and just as we reached the bottom, it gave one bound, climbed up my face, sprang from the top of my head, and there it was again on the roof. <laughs> Screaming for me to get it down. Again. What? My cat, of course. What did you think? No, 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 no never mind. Don't answer that. Now, why did he come in? I don't like this. Is he anyone you know? Who? That Martian. Yours by any chance? No, no, I suppose not. Yours was probably the one who went out a while ago. I wonder if he went to make a report and send this one in. It's possible. It could be. You can talk now, but keep your voice low and stop squirming. Want him to notice we can see him? Look, I can't see him. So don't drag me into this. You and your Martians can fight it out together. You're making me nervous. I've got to go anyway. Stop watching me. Stop watching him. Anybody think you were a cat? Why a cat? Why should anybody... Do I look like a cat? We were talking about cats, weren't we? Cats can see them quite clearly. Even undressed, I believe. They don't like them. Who doesn't like who? Whom... Neither likes the other. Cats can see Martians, but they pretend not to, and that makes the Martians mad. Why well, have a theory that cats ruled the world before Martians came? Oh, never mind. Forget about cats. Uh, this may be more serious than you think. It would have to be. I happen to know my Martians taking tonight off, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that was your Martian who went out some time ago. And have you noticed that nobody else in here has his Martian with him? Oh, do you suppose? Oh, do you suppose they could be waiting for us outside? In the alley with the cats, I suppose. Why don't you stop this endless yammering about cats and be serious for a moment? Hey, hey, hey. What's the matter now? Nothing. Nothing. It was just that he looked at me with you know let me get this straight. I take it the Martian is dressed in... Uh, is dressed like a human. Naturally. But he's invisible to all eyes but yours? Yes. He doesn't want to be visible just now. Besides... Besides... You know... I rather think that you can see him. A little, anyway. What makes you think that? I... did I say something? <laughs> oh, I wasn't listening. I think I'll go now. No, you won't. Not yet, you won't. Come back here. Sit down. Now, what was the idea? Where were you going? I... I don't feel so good. Maybe I've had too much to drink. I guess You're I'm... all right. I don't trust you back there with that invisible man of yours. You'll stay right here until he leaves. He's going now. See? He's gone. Now let me loose, will you? No, he isn't gone. Sit right where you are. All right. He's still there. You can see him, can't you? Has he got his back to us? You can see him then. Better than I can, maybe. Oh, maybe there are more of them in here than I thought. Oh, they could be anywhere. They could be sitting beside you anywhere you go, and you wouldn't even guess until... Hmm. They'd want to be sure. They can give you orders and make you forget, but there must be limits to what they can force you to do. They can't make a man betray himself. They'd have to lead him on until they were sure. <sighs> okay. It's getting late. Not many people left. We'll wait. Wait for what? I have something to show you. I don't want anyone else to see. Is there anyone left? Only... He isn't looking. Let's get this over with. What do you want to show me? I just want to be sure of something. First, why did you pick me out? 
Suppose you try the truth this time. <sighs> it's the way you look at things. Sometimes I see you on the subway. You don't see me, but I see you. I noticed that you looked at things, the wrong things, things that weren't there, the way a cat does. And then you'd always look away. I got the idea you could see the Martians, too. Go on. So, I kept hoping you'd turn out to be somebody I could talk to. Because if I could know that I wasn't the only one who could still see them, then I'd know there was still some hope left. Oh, it's been worse than solitary confinement. I've been able to see them for three years now. Three years! And I've managed to keep my power a secret, even from them. And somehow, I've managed to keep from killing myself, too. Three years? Yes. There was always a little hope. I knew nobody would believe, not without proof. And how can you get proof? Oh, it was only that I... I kept telling myself, maybe you could see them too. And if you could, maybe there were others, lots of others. Enough so we might get together and work out some way of proving to the world... Well, I may have your proof right here. Take a look at these photographs. Hmm. Hmm. The second question arises on the other side of the... Moonlight? No, not moonlight. Infrared. I'm no pro photographer, but lately I've been experimenting with infrared film. And I got some very odd results. You see, I live near some woods. Something funny keeps showing up now and then against them. But only with infrared film. Now I know chlorophyll reflects so much infrared light that grass and leaves photograph white. The sky comes out black like this. There are tricks to using this kind of film. Photograph a tree against a cloud and you can't tell them apart in the print. But you can photograph through a haze and pick out distant objects that ordinary film wouldn't catch. And sometimes, when you focus on something like this, you get a very odd image on the film. Like that. A man, three eyes. Yes. You know, a professor of astrophysics at one of the more important universities had a very interesting little item in the Times the other Sunday. Name of Spitzer, I think. He said that if there were life on Mars and if Martians ever visited Earth, there'd be no way to prove it. Nobody would believe the few men who saw them. Not he said, unless the Martians happen to be photographed. Well, it's happened. Oh, you photographed them. I thought so, too. Only until tonight I couldn't be sure. I'd never seen one fully as you have. It isn't so much a matter of what you call getting your brain scrambled with supersonics as it is a matter of just knowing where to look. But I've been seeing part of them all my life, and so has everybody. It's that little suggestion of movement you never catch except just at the edge of your vision, just out of the corner of your eye, something that's almost there. And when you look fully at it, there's nothing. These photographs showed me the way. It's not easy to learn, but it can be done. We're conditioned to look directly at a thing, the particular thing we want to see clearly, whatever it is. Perhaps the Martians gave us that conditioning. When we see a movement at the edge of our range of vision, it's almost irresistible not to look directly at it, so it vanishes. Hmm. Then they can be seen by anybody? I've learned a lot in the last few days since I took those photographs. You have to train yourself. It's like seeing a trick picture, one that's really a composite after you study it. Camouflage. You just have to learn how. Otherwise, we can look at them all our lives and never see them. Mm -hmm. The camera does, though. Yes, the camera does. I've wondered why nobody ever caught them this way before. Once you see them on film, they're unmistakable. That third eye. <laughs> Infrared film's comparatively new, isn't it? And then, I'll bet you have to catch them against that one particular background, you know, or, or they won't show on the film. Like trees against clouds. Oh, it's tricky. You must have had just the right lighting that day, and exactly the right focus, and the lens stopped down just right. <sighs> A kind of minor miracle. 
It might never happen again exactly that way, but... He looked back at us. He looked at us. That third eye. I don't think they're suspicious yet. The trick will be to keep undercover until we can blow this thing wide open. There's got to be some way to do it. Some way that will convince people. Oh, there's proof now. The photographs. Oh, a competent cameraman ought to be able to figure out just how you caught that Martian on film and duplicate the conditions. It's evidence. Evidence can cut both ways, though. What I'm hoping is that the Martians don't really like to kill unless they have to. I'm hoping they won't kill without proof, but, uh... <gasps> There's two of us now, though. Oh, we've got to stick together. Both of us have broken the big rule. Oh, don't look now. We better not be seen together unnecessarily. But if we both come to this bar tomorrow night after work for a drink, that wouldn't look suspicious, even to them. Oh, I suppose. Uh, may I have one of those photographs? Why? Well, if one of us had an accident, the other one would still have the proof. Enough, maybe, to convince the right people. Hmm. Okay. But hide it. It's evidence. I'll see you here tomorrow. In the meantime, be careful. Remember to play it safe. Oh, right. See you tomorrow. At 13 Penny Streets Northwest in the city of Washington. And transmitting facilities on the Mount Vernon Memorial so? Boulevard in Alexandria. <sighs> She's on to us. Ah, uh, too bad. Yes, it is. Because something tells me that she's going to have an accident tonight. Oh, well. One more for the road, please. Hmm? We'll come to you at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. So ends Don't Look Now by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes. Tonight's story of Suspense. Suspense is produced by Blue Hours Productions and recorded at Melrose Music in Hollywood, California. Tonight's radio drama was adapted for radio by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes from the short story by Henry Kuttner. Damon Kroll was Lyman, Catherine Kamei was Sammy, and Rocky Serta was Frank. I'm your host, Damon Crawl. Next week at this time, tune in again for another study in... Suspense. You must recognize that unique sound, the Grateful Dead will be brought to wildly harmonic life by Blair Jackson and David Gans when they present their new book, This Is All a Dream We Dreamed, an oral history of the Grateful Dead. This audio illumination of family, fans, friends, and a long, strange trip, as Wavy Gravy puts it, happens Saturday, November 19th, 7.30 p.m. in St. John's Presbyterian Church. 2727 College Avenue in Berkeley. This KPFA benefit is wheelchair accessible. I'm Dirk Richardson, host of the Here and Now and of This Great Evening. Advanced tickets are at brownpapertickets.com and our beloved indie bookstores. There's more info at kpfa.org for Blair and David's Grateful Dead coming into bloom again November 19th. <laughs> Demand the Impossible is a thrilling radical manifesto, refreshing, functional. Medea Benjamin says it will get you up and into the street, fist raised, heart full, reaching for the spectacular. This will be presented by writer Bill Ayers with Bernardine Dorn, former weather folk, now fierce social justice activists. Thursday, December 1st at St. John's Presbyterian Church, 2727 College Avenue in Berkeley. There's free parking and wheelchair access at this KPFA benefit. Advanced tickets at brownpapertickets.com and indie bookshops. See the KPFA website for the outspoken support of Naomi Klein, Vijay Prashad, Chris Hedges, Angela Davis, and so many more. For Bill and Bernardine, December 1st.